Welcome to the Some Laugh Podcast. It could be like, oh, that was some laugh, or there was, there was just some laugh. Some laugh. <laughs> well, no promising all laugh. No, <laughs> it's, there's going to be some. It's some laugh. Every time we've got a Liam on, we need a dog as well. Yeah. That's what we've <laughs> decided. Yeah, so we've got we've got a dog here today, which may or may not uh, disrupt the recording at some point, but we'll, we'll hope not. Bella but, and Bertie are also kind of similar names mm-hmm. as well. Bella, mm-hmm. Bella is a good name. I feel like people's names are becoming like the people are norm. naming their kids after like basically dog names. Like but everything's got to be Ella. It's always like it's just it the other way about? Ella, Bella, everybody, Alba. It's always mad names like that people <laughs> oh, name their ways. Is it not the other way about? But... Dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's Alex Salmon's dog. <laughs> <laughs> is it not like people naming dogs after humans? No. It goes both ways, doesn't it? Yeah. Because I've never met a wee, a wee. It's the chicken or the egg. I've Spot. not got a kid or a dog, but right. you've got both. Like. Aye. Well, we were. Got... <laughs> <laughs> we were. There was talker calling if it was a boy. We were going to call them Aussie. Ah, that's a aye. good name. After like... Osborne. Aye, because I was like the you're... kid. The kid. The kid. Yeah. Aye. Because oh, right. I was like, you're going to have to. You can't be an arsehole and be called Aussie because like you'll just get the shit up to you. So I was like, fucking, this shit up to be sound. <laughs> <laughs> but then, well, that's pressure for you, isn't it? Well, no, just be like, you're <laughs> You could be forgiven for thinking a man with the name Ozzy Osborne was born in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Is Ozzy his real name? Uh, I, well, it's like Oswald or something. Is that oh, yeah, Oswald. That's Oswald Osborne. Is that his actual name? Aye, I think so. That's very <laughs> Tory, that name, actually. Yeah. I fucking Oswald Mosley. I, uh, I always used to think that, because uh, I obviously don't pay much attention to cricket, but know how you'd always see Flintoff in the news. And I always thought that Freddie Flintoff and Andrew Flintoff were brothers. Twins. Twin brothers yeah. who both played, ro- like, both played <laughs> cricket for England. And then I found out, like, it's the same they guy. call him Freddie because. It's, it's, it sounds almost like Flintstone. I know, I just not, it's no, a bit of a reach, just, isn't it? Really? Yeah, it's a bit <laughs> of a reach. Because <laughs> you just sort of thought, like, I just thought there was two guys. And yeah. Just you'd never. Why would you think any different? I never seen them in the same place. You into cricket, Liam? No, I don't, I don't know. No. Any, <laughs> no, I, mean, I know he's on Top Gear, though, so that's. Uh, Which one, one but Paddy? is it Freddy or Andrew? <laughs> it's like Larry and Kelly, it's the character of Freddy Flintoff is the presenter <laughs> for tax reasons. <laughs> Who's the third guy, though? Because it's Paddy McGuinness. Freddie Flintoff, and then there's just some other guy. I think guy. he used to some be in the Stendals or something. All right. Aye. Fair enough. Did they not have Matt LeBlanc for a while? Ah, yeah, had Joey. him. But that was in, when it was, did they relaunch it with Paddy, Matt, and somebody? I don't I was, know. Was, I checked out in the, when I was about 10. Oh, oh here we go. Hey, hey, here we go. Come on, Bella. Come on, Bella. Come on, Bella. I'd like Me and Steve will get distracted when there's a dog. <laughs> yeah. Right. She doesn't jump up, does she? Eh, uh, she might, but she she she's usually just sits on the floor and sleeps all the time. That's how she really uh, does. I'd like her to jump up. Most of you get the dog. Maybe, sure. I've got a well. I did have a cat. And that's stopping you getting the dog. <laughs> you don't want to be heartbroken. My mom has a cat, so I don't want to do that to to Tilly. Do you know what I mean? Warring families. Yeah, yeah, cross over the other side. I would love a wee dog. I almost got the dog. I got I almost got an American bulldog. Then I put down a two hundred pound deposit, <laughs> and then I found out it's having a baby. So then I fucking lost the deposit. So oh, I, really, I couldn't get back. Nightmare. How's that? Because I told the girl, I was like, "Look, I'm having a baby. I can't really have a puppy as well." Oh, I thought you meant the bulldog was having a baby. No, I was having. <laughs> so you were having. Uh, yeah, bulldog was having a baby with a human name. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it's confusing. <laughs> and when they gave me the deposit back, <sighs> that's a good like, oh, Fuck's sake! You could have sold it for double your money. Uh, well, I didn't think of that at the time. It was very stressful. <laughs> but bulldogs, they're one of the ones that's like, you should neglect them because it's quite cruel, isn't it? It's like right? the, be- the breathing problems and all that. Oh, no, you're like a pugs. pugs. Is it not bulldogs as well? I thought it was any kind yeah, of... Yeah, that's like an English bulldog. Anyone this with is a, a fucked up face. Yeah, like uh, a fucked breathe. up face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what... It's an American one, so it's quite like a big one. Ah, right, uh, okay. Fair enough. It is weird that like, <laughs> should... So what is the humane thing to do for a pug then? To just like breed them out of existence so they don't need to I think suffer so. the agony of being <laughs> I, alive? I think that is what they're saying because I was on TikTok it was like the top five dogs you should never get and one was like a King Charles Cavalier which I've, I've always wanted. They're pure uh, cute. We flat face. Right. Uh, they're just fucked. Like <laughs> just fucked in general. in general. Yeah. Just breathing problems, heart problems and all that. 
like so. sausage dogs, their backs are fucked. They shouldn't it's get not on us though. Surely, like evolution. No, I think because yeah, yeah, yeah. we are a lot of these them. dogs are have been breeded by humans. They just obviously wouldn't exist otherwise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like cutting off their tails and shit. Like I think that's maybe bulldogs, isn't it? They would burn with long tails and then you cut off their tails to make. Yeah, it shorter. like an English bulldog. I yeah. think doing it. It's cruel. When they did, you just have a cull of all pugs or something. I don't know if we kill them all. Like kid on his like foot and mouth or something, and just get rid of them all. <laughs> <laughs> they are cute, but yeah, I think you shouldn't buy them. That's what I hear. Okay. We're tiptoeing towards animal genocide. On the <laughs> 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 a dog holocaust. ethnic cleansing. So today we've got a uh, good. A comedian and good friend man. Liam Farrelly. I praise indeed. Uh, <laughs> good, 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 great <laughs> comedian and friend Liam Farrelly. Uh, and Dog Bella. And yeah. Dog Bella. Yeah, right. Do you remember the first time I ever met you, Liam? Oh fuck. No, what? Where was it? Scott Squad inter- uh, oh, audition. Yeah, I, just, yeah, I was yeah, there as well. Yeah, you were there. Hell. Yeah. We were partnered up. Oh yeah, I do remember that. Hi, because I had to fucking skip school or something to go to that. <laughs> <laughs> what year would you have been then? About? I would have been seventeen. Jesus. What year was that? Uh, it would have been like 2017 was it yeah so that was when you started so you were born in 2000 I was born in 99 but December so so usually matches up with a year wow but so you're, you're like in the most likely age bracket to see three different centuries, potentially. Aye, well, well, wait. <laughs> well, well, not in the sort of uh, area code to actually do that, to be fair. <laughs> Paisley, I don't think a lot of people are living to like 110. <laughs> I've moved off, I've got a dentist in there. All right. I know, I know. I moving up in the world. I know. Right it's up and coming, they keep telling us. Aye, it stops just before. Are they up and coming back? <laughs> in the 22nd century, it should be nice. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I so that was the Scott Squad edition. Scott aye. Squad edition, aye. We aye, were partnered was, up. Yeah, I remember we had to like improvise a uh, scene together, and then what were you doing? I, think I just, don't know. So it's one of those group interviews mm, li- or group auditions. Yeah. And you had to do you had to do wee challenges not together. Yeah. Uh, you first don't do of that all, you got part, ruined that. Yeah, oh, right. but no, it was it was funny because it was like. We had to like I don't know improvise a conversation. Then it was like a wider group thing, and there was one guy on who kept. I'm not going to name Michael his name. Scott. <laughs> <laughs> he just he was so selfish because it's it's all about give and take with improv. Right. And yes, and this guy was just doing wee one liners and puns and all that. So it was like setting a, a fish shop, fish and chip shop, and you go, I've heard somebody's been battered in here, <laughs> and maybe like oh, fuck's sake, give us something to work with. And that man's he, name was Grado. <laughs> <laughs> One of the no, main cast. It wasn't. It was. You got Bleep this out. Black. Bleep <laughs> 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 <Play> out. <laughs> I remember that. I think I was in his group because I well because I remember doing that as well, and I like done quite badly. I think I didn't have any improv experience. So I don't. I never really got on. Um, it was before Stuart could use his yeah, nepotism before, <laughs> before I took the audition. <laughs> but um. The, but I remember meeting you because you had done acting and stuff before, did you know? I'd done like it's done youth theatre basically because my sisters went to it and then my mum was like, "Well, you're also gonna fucking go to it as well then." So <laughs> I just ended up there. So like, I knew like a bit of improv stuff just because like I'd been sitting watching it for like five years and then mm. basically just got it off the back of that. So it went all right. I because I was in fucking I'd done the chip shop thing as well, but it was with Scott Agnew. Ah, uh, he was also in the audition. Uh, that was the first time I ever met him, and he's like fucking smell my hands for fish, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fair was that before the improv started? <laughs> <laughs> the, had you done stand up at that point then? I would have done about two gigs because a uh, Joe Hullet, who used to like, I think he was like the creator. Uh, creator. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was at my second of our gig, and then right. he was like, oh can you come and do this audition? And I was like, aye, all right, because I didn't really know what he was on about. And then like, I just walked in and then he was like, right, do a group audition now? And then he was like, hey, right, you're on the show. And I was like, all right. It's kind of crazy. And I was going to say this, but like, I think out of everyone, like you're the one that like got good the fastest. Like I don't remember you being shite 
which is really yeah. annoying. Everyone else, you remember them being shy and getting shy good. And but getting you were bad. like, you were like instantly good and getting opportunities and stuff. Because you, because we were doing that together, you actually got on the show and I never. And I was like, oh, bastard! <laughs> I was propping him up the whole time. Come on, <laughs> but uh, five years down the line, five who, years. who's acting with me last Sunday? <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> it's, yeah. good, yeah. it's good to be the only person in Scotland who never made it on Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> A cab. That's what I've got to say. A cab. All right. Uh, no. You used a couple of your stories. This is copaganda. Uh, actually, I want to pay for that. Get aye. That aye. Yeah, you're part of this copaganda. Actually, it's, it's a great show. <laughs> <laughs> so you were 17 when you started stand up as well. I, it's a young age to start. Yeah. I it wasn't. I didn't really know any different though, because like I just went straight into it and like never really never had like a proper job. So I was still in school and then went straight into that. Then just when I finished school, I got paid for Scott Squad. So then I was like, oh, well, I've got a bit of money now. Like, I don't need to get a job. <laughs> <laughs> this will set me up for life. Uh, uh, BBC Scotland. 500 money. quid. <laughs> so I was like, ah, I'll be fine. And then, uh, and then, like, when that money ran out, I just started getting paid for gigs, like, the next week. So I was like, ah, oh, right, this is what It's fucking it. mental. And I was like, crazy. Because yeah. I used to be, because I'd, I'd give you lifts quite a lot, and I would just always think, like, You've just come out of school and you're just doing gigs in the mental world of stand up comedy. And like, I was just thinking, God, all your formative experiences are going to be what are these fucking Tom not jobs. <laughs> <laughs> People coked up backstage. Yeah. And <laughs> like, this isn't what real life is like. Uh, but, but there uh, you go. And you're 20, must be 22 now, then? Aye, uh, 22 now. And then 23 next month, right? Fucking hell. Uh, I mean, I only started when I was 22, so. Yeah, I was yeah, 21, I think. Bit, 22. Aye, 22. Big but was, what was it like then, like doing it whilst being at school? What what were like your pals like and stuff? Uh, that? Well, I didn't really tell many people. Like, I just because I didn't really go into school that much. Like I just kind of <laughs> no show up a lot. And then was he was... gigging? I'm in Hull for it. <laughs> I can't even go. <laughs> <fucking> <laughs> I when I was in school, I had really bad insomnia. So like I just like sleep through my, most of my classes. Right. I so like nobody really knew what was going on with me. They were just like this fucking guy just comes and goes to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was is that because you were gigging late at night and stuff or was that just nah, in general just, just i couldn't sleep and then like when i would go into school like my body would be like right, i'm ready to sleep now because you've not slept in about 24 hours oh, and uh, then fucking i just go to sleep for french and then wake up to sleep. <laughs> it's like it's been designed to help somebody get off to sleep in it uh, <laughs> did they ever like sink into your dreams and shit and you're talking about fromage in your dreams <laughs> no i used to try and write though like i'd wake up and i'd be like just try to write something and i'd be like what the fuck is this and it's just like I literally just a line because I was like <laughs> clearly I was like this is important I need to fucking remember this but like couldn't <laughs> physically do it I, do you still it. suffer from that now? not really because it's, it's not as bad now because like I basically just only work nights so I feel like it does happen I just like right, I'll just sleep all day yeah. Yeah. So I'll be fine so you found a, a job that can suit the lifestyle uh, one of the only <laughs> jobs <so. laughs> and, uh, well that's interesting because like as you say then so you basically left school Found doing stand up, and what made you? What made you actually like? Can I start anyway? Just, just basically because I'd like fuck all else to do. I was like, because <laughs> <laughs> it was like you get taken for like when you're leaving school, like, they take you out to be like, what are you going to do now? And I was like, I don't know. They're like, well, you better fucking figure something out. And uh, I was like, all right. So then I got packed into. Did you just have like the base when you were in school? How do you mean? So like, like, it was like a base where you went if they like kind of didn't have a lot of hope for you. So like they were like, nah, we're a holding gonna... pen. Aye, basically. You mean a, a base meant? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, so it's just been, it was called a support for learning base. But all that really happened is there was a woman who had like fuck all teeth and she'd supervise <laughs> you. And, do you remember when like people used to dress up as like Native Americans in the street and sell like panpipe music? Yeah, uh, I do. I, that. So fucking, That's a dying game, that. I, what? <laughs> what was that? You get like pan papers and they would try and sell their they'd do the music and like sell a, their CDs. And then doing headrests on. I don't know. I, don't what, I actually remember seeing them when I went uh, with my mum and daddy Santa Ponza. I think it was the first time I ever encountered <laughs> the pan paper. But then uh, you would see them, you'd just been like shopping. Just centers, and tuning on that, yeah. aye. So she's selling bought, CDs. Aye. Yeah. Well, she bought one of these fucking CDs, so <laughs> you'd be sat in there for an hour listening to, like, I Am Sailing on the fucking pantheon. <laughs> <laughs> and then Probably the only CD they sold that year uh, to that fucking it toothless like one. like a great way to get to sleep. Uh, right? so, so they would ch- chuck you a book and be like, read that and sit in here for an hour, just so basically they knew where you were and you weren't up to any fucking trouble or anything. So then I got Kevin Bridges' book, so then I read that, Found out about Red Raw at the stand, and I was like, "All right, fuck it, I'll try that." And I done that, and it 
fucking went all right and then he asked us back again so just went for the elbows because yeah. like i think kevin bridges says in his book his version of that was getting frank skinner's book and yeah. then going in and doing stand-up yeah. so like you're he he's the next generation Someday, you know, he's gonna be reading your book <laughs> 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 like he's, you're saying as well it's like he doesn't know what he did he just thought i'll just start doing stand-up and then get start getting paid gigs and then probably in your mind you'll ah and surely it's only a matter of time before I go on live at the Apollo, <laughs> which I actually knew has fucking happened as well. Ah, yeah. Yeah, it's right. I didn't think I was ever going to go on it. I was just like, I was quite happy at like club level because I was like, I, you know, there's fuck all pressure here. Like, it's quite hard to fuck this up. Like, <laughs> yeah. Enough that you're going to get the sack. Like, yeah. kind of need to beast someday, and even then, like, <laughs> you kind of let you stay a bit for a while. This speaks a lot to your confidence of not dying in your ass because that is the way that you can stop getting booked yeah. if you just don't get laughs. But you're like, and the gigs are going well, I just need to not be a, a bit of it. But no, but I, so obviously, because it's not it's no been out yet, unless we we're allowed to talk about it. We're we're allowed allowed to, ah, yeah, folk we're talk. sharing the pictures and stuff, yeah, 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 yeah. I think you can say what you want about it, basically. It's amazing, man. That's cool. I, it's, it's not unreal. bad, it's a pretty fucking easy gig, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you actually tell everybody to laugh before you fucking bring you on, so you're like, right, well, I really can't fuck this up now, like, but there are still comedians who have been on it and have. Died I, in their arse. That's the mad thing. Like, I don't really know how you can pull that off. Like, it's <laughs> more impressive. <laughs> but is it not like quite a long night? Are, are they not doing like four or five recordings uh, of each different shows in one night? Or? I think they might do it. The night I done it, they done two. So you had three acts and then a break, and then you had my episode, which was three same acts. same audience. Yeah, same audience. But they really like hype them up. They'll be like, right, if you laugh really loud. We'll do a close up of you and you'll make it on <laughs> the telly. One second of fame. <laughs> <laughs> so you get people pure laughing like fuck it hangs or like that's just a setup for something that's uh, not even like a punchline though. I love that that'd be a selling point. Like, yeah. Uh, you you're, that, you're that guy that pissed his pants at Josh Withercombe on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start saying that just when I bring my wee camera along to record gigs for myself. <laughs> if you just laugh really loudly, I'll get a close up of you. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. That's but cool. so tell us how it came about, or like how, because that, that must have been an exciting thing to do. Um, to find out your own well it was basically so they do it was like the booker of it was at a gig that I got booked for in London but there was only like fucking 15 people at this gig because I was like I got told he was there and I was like right well I'm no fucking getting on it because this is going to be a fucking shit gig so I like I done I didn't do well like, but I done enough to get by and then he came and saw my fringe show off the back of that and then in the last week of the fringe he just was like right I'm going to make you an offer do you want to be on this and I was like I all right, and then fuck it. <laughs> it's not much <laughs> an offer, is it? Do you want to be on it, or do you know want to be on it? That's, that's the offer, basically. And that was your reaction. I all right. I <laughs> 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 just translate what that fucking meant for the game. <laughs> the Godfather would have a lot less narrative tension if that's how it played out. <laughs> Mate, Michael, see if we put this gun in the fucking system, will you kill this guy? I all right. I suppose. So. Aye, so then done that, and then we thought I thought it was gonna get cancelled because like the week they fucking filmed it was the week after the Queen had died. Oh, I so uh... like fucking I went down to London. That was absolute chaos in there because the fucking queue was still going. Oh, was it? Yeah, so you're trying to get everywhere, and there's fucking massive queues there and shit like that. Trying and to then... get into the Apollo, and there's a <laughs> queue blocking the door. <laughs> I said, I was like, ah, oh, this is going to get pulled or something. But then they brought us all in and they were like, right, just no one fucking mentioned the royal family. Right. And they were like, not even like in a positive light, like <laughs> just do not say a fucking word about them. Really? Aye. Somebody did, but like, fucking, it wasn't me. But like, <laughs> How did it go down in the room? They were kind of, it was somebody being like, oh, I'll not even do my Prince Andrew joke now. And mm. then, like, put, like, the audience are like, oh, fucking, like, try to egg them on. To do it. Aye. But, like, you could see the book at the side was, like, fucking fuming. Like, <laughs> get about one of the big hooks <laughs> to fucking take them off stage. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, so, fucking, basically that happened. But then he was just looking at me, like, don't fucking, don't you do it now. <laughs> That's and, great. And so, what was it like? So, did you, did you prepare or not? Did you do some gigs in London that week 
and the I, and stuff like that. Or? I done like the boat show, which is fucking weird, man. You've done it, yeah. I you fucking feel the boat moving yeah, by on yeah. stage. Like, I thought I've a bit of fucking hit the deck, man. It's like yeah. doing stand up in an earthquake or something. Aye. Aye. especially if you've had like a pint before it as well. You don't know if it, you're steaming or if it's like, <laughs> or if the boat's just rocking. I so I done that to get ready for it, and then I done another one. Uh, it was called Cray Cray Cabaret. It's in the comedy store. It's a really yeah. fucking cool gig. Like basically, there's like a live band. They like all do like improvised like tracks, so you can literally walk on and be like, "Oh, give me like a smooth jazz beat," and then they'll underscore <laughs> your whole set with like just smooth you jazz. You talking about Paisley Teeth while Aye. they're playing <laughs> sort of swing music? <laughs> Aye, but I, they didn't do it for me because they're like, "You're getting ready for this thing," so like. Obviously, we're not going to be there for your Apollo. <laughs> you don't want to be thrown off at the Apollo because you've not got a fucking baseline on them. So, they didn't do it for me, but like everybody else like smashed it and it was like a really fucking fun gig. Like, oh, that's cool. Aye. So, like, that's if cool. you had like a scary bit in your set, you could be like, give some spooky music. Aye. Right Aye. <laughs> that's quite cool. Shut it up, man. That's like your Steve's dream. That is. Like horror so much. Yeah, that is, man. That's <laughs> class. I need to get on this gig. Aye, it's really good, man. You should go for it. It's down at the comedy store as well, so it's like they get a good audience in. Uh, yeah, that's decent. And so then you go into the Apollo, so you had that moment of obviously the big fucking screen thing that says live at the Apollo Aye. coming up, the stars in your eyes smoke and you walk out. What, what was that like? I I just was like, all right, and then. <laughs> so I was gonna right. say you're like one of the most laid back people I know, and I know a lot of laid back people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it must it must feel like a big moment though when you do it. Did you, did you not did you not feel any different than if you were just doing some random club gig? No, really. Like, I would be more worried about a club gig because I just was like, hey, there's more stuff that goes wrong. Because like, even then, like, so the fir- I they filmed the first episode first, and you saw that one, and you watched how it was done. And basically, somebody was swearing too much. So I actually just brought the guy back out and he done the same lines again. So I was like, pressure's really off because you're just like, right, even if I do fuck this up somehow, they'll bring like, you back they're just going to bring me back on. Because I think that's the thing that I would always worry about and, and do it if I ever am filming something is that I'll just stumble over a line and get it wrong and then I've fucked it for the recording. Yeah. But obviously, if you know that you can sort of go over a line even like if you just say the words the wrong way round or swear or whatever yeah. then I guess that must be quite a relief yeah. to know you can do that the yeah. pickups they're called in pickups Aye, stuff yeah. like that so like you're it's one of those ones where like the pressure is completely off as an act because you're just like to a point where like this isn't doesn't really feel like doing stand up like yeah, it's just, a bit of a Disneyland version of stand up like, this yeah. is like yeah. totally like the rails on kind of thing like yeah. you're not messing about but is it not a bit different because in a, obviously a, a comedy club it's usually people are down there and you're talking to them but then you go into a theatre like that and people are all about you do you uh, not have to and I've heard that you have to like pause for the there's a wee delay and the laughs coming back and stuff did you have to do that or were you just I you just take like pauses and stuff you just like wait for the laugh to like stop and then go on to the next spot like it's like you just kind of go with the crowd because like as well like they've got you've got the people up there but you can't really see them so like you end up delivering like most of the lines to like the front three rows because that's what you can see oh, yeah. so like you just like right they're laughing so I'll shim them up the back I'll probably laugh too so Aye. I'll just hold a wee bit for that laugh to come is right. that the biggest room you've played? I think it must be. I think it's. I think How it's, big is that? It's like I think it's like three, four thousand or something. Aye. I've all every time I watch live at the Paul, I just think about that my door that's on now the side of the, like the kind of side bit. Yeah, what like, like the compel walks like, off that way. No, 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 no. It's just on the wall. Let's like, see if you oh, ever right. see it. Like they, they show you if you kind of side on, like facing the crowd and the stage. There's just like a mad door that's like halfway up, like. It just I've looks like a door, it's like, but it's no tea anywhere, you couldn't get to it. Oh, but it's really? just, I always just like, <laughs> just go, well, that's such a weird thing to be in a theatre. Maybe it's from when you do it with your cherry picker. You can <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm going to do when I'm going live at the polo. So, uh, or any theatre gig or um, big show, I'm going yeah, to go on the cherry picker. Like, <laughs> like, like, fucking, I don't know. I was, I was just trying to go through. List of people there that only cancelled. <laughs> I, I went Michael Jackson, Can't Chris do. Brown. No, <laughs> <laughs> somebody must come on in a cherry picker that's no <laughs> cancelled. Britney it's Spears or something. Britney, oh, Britney. Oh, Britney. she's bulletproof. She's Aye. back. Team she's Britney back. on this pod. Absolutely, Britney bitch. Um, <laughs> one thing you asked as well, because obviously, like, because you've you've been good for going to London and stuff like that a lot. And yeah. um, we all know the perils uh, of obviously going down south and um, and obviously having 
a trouble with the accent. You obviously Liam, have got quite a strong uh, yeah. Glasgow accent. How how do you find it down there? Uh, it's usually like talk, try to have a conversation with somebody just like normally. It's quite difficult, but then like, <laughs> uh, but when you're on stage, it's usually fine because I usually just open up on a bit about how my accent's quite strong, and then like once you kind of do that with them and be like, hey, right, so I can't talk in a way that like you could fully understand it because I'd sound fucking mental mm-hmm. but like, yeah. I can talk in this way and you can get the just of it so mm-hmm. like once they understand that they're like aye that's alright and then it's just like doing a normal gig again so do you sort of try and do you do that like on purpose slow down and kind of do a, an I, accent on stage I did for a bit because I, I got fucking sent to elocution lessons <laughs> <laughs> seems like they went really well <laughs> Elocution lessons. That teacher's been struck off. Sadly, <laughs> since. What was, is, what was elocution was lessons? That, like then? Was it your ex-agent that sent you? Ah, he was yeah, she, yeah, I you, remember you telling me this. She, she, she sent me to them, and then she wanted me to send me to a dentist as well. So that was <laughs> really <laughs> lovely conversation. I she's like, we'll get sick. your teeth fixed. Does she think <laughs> your teeth are sort of fucking up the voice as it comes out the mouth? <laughs> well, was the other thing as well. She was like, because you have TV things come up, and I was like, I've already done a wee bit of TV stuff. It was going to be fucking weird if people were like, oh, let's have a look at his earlier stuff, and they're like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> people like the Scottish Jim Jeffries. Yeah. <laughs> Liam Farley's so precocious and that he was he was great straight away. He got on telly quick and he, he got to turkey teeth within like four years. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Carr took him twenty five years to do that. See if you got turkey teeth, you could still do your opening joke if you can tell for the state of my teeth that I'm for Paisley. <laughs> it would still work. Aye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Aye, but I could fucking well, I only ever done one lesson and it was like and I ended up so like we went over the one bit uh, over and over again, basically being like, right, you've got to pronounce your T here, you've got to change the way you say this, and then because I could done that bit so much, whenever I tried to do that bit again, all I could think about was the fucking elocution lesson. <laughs> so then, it pure... so do you know that that is the wrong word to say? I can't say it properly because I didn't go to my second lesson basically <laughs> but fucking it was like that bit just and I ended up hating it and it was like I couldn't get the bit to be funny again because I was too busy being like and now you've got to say a T here and I was like I'm in fucking Glasgow like mm-hmm. if I start saying this now they'll be like what the fuck is this guy doing because he's been fairly normal up until he's got to this one bit and then he's fucking gone English <laughs> <laughs> Oh, very um, dog up now. Yeah, I guess it's difficult that as well because obviously in an oral medium you do need people to understand what you're saying. But if you start to not sound like yourself then you start to feel like a fraud or like it fucks with the rhythms of how you, you speak. You yeah. start overthinking it massively because even like I was going, I was being told like oh, English people were really struggling to understand you which I was like, oh, I think they are because I've done those gigs and they were fine before. They're laughing, you're like, well, they must be understanding, uh, you know? They're not just laughing at my accent unless they are. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes people do come up it. and say that to you, though, and you're just they're like, uh, it would be funny in your accent. And it's like, well, that has been demonstratively <laughs> proven wrong because <laughs> yeah. I fucking died my as well. Yeah. Because uh, I've had that as well, that English acts coming up to me and just saying, oh, it's, it's not even just the jokes, it's just the way... You, your voice is when you say it it's like I mean that's I would not take that as a compliment such a ba- it's not even a backhanded compliment it's such it's an a, insult yeah it's an insult eh? I think it is nice like somebody did say when you once says oh you've got the perfect voice for comedy when I was in London and I was just I just said to him I was like I when they can fucking understand me because yeah. it's like it, it's a bit of a gift and a curse I think uh, yeah. uh, like the Scottish accent like because it gives you when you go to England all of a sudden you are something different yeah because you know like obviously up here you just get used to everybody Scottish most, mostly on the gigs you go down there it gives you a wee bit of a you know something a wee USP yeah wee USP but it also means that you've got that wee bit of disconnect whereas here I think there's more like when you're gigging in Scotland you've got more of a shorthand because you kind of know where the audience is comfy and they know where you're comfy a wee bit whereas you're a wee bit other when you're down there to, to yeah. an extent mm-hmm. as much as you can be another as a fucking straight white guy and other shit but um, I always yeah. think it's useful to be a fish out of water, though. So that's always helpful. Absolutely, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, is it more like were you thinking about like, oh, if my pals hear this, they're going to think that I'm talking like a wank or whatever? If you're trying to, I was pronounce things pr- properly. I wasn't really worried about that. It was just like it was pure like you're overthinking everything you're saying. So even if you like you go to like just bounce off someone in the crowd, you're then like 
like you're not like saying the first one that comes to your head you're going right i'm going to say that but i'm going to need to put a t here when yeah. i need to pronounce that r yeah you're like, well this is just you know, fucked cause, it takes like, you out of that flow state or the yeah. autopilot of it I, i've always found that in england and like because it's there's so because sometimes you overdo it and you do the fucking phone voice and then you're not you're not being funny because you're like you're trying to be too proper yeah um but then also if you just don't do anything at all then sometimes they they can you just understand if you just come on and start talking too fast and and no pronouncing anything so i've always found there's a kind of sweet spot you can hit uh. where you're delivering a way that is uh, like you're pronouncing things just enough for them to understand, but without fucking up your flow and your Aye. natural rhythms. Yeah. But it, t- I always find it takes a couple of days. I've been doing that to, to get to that yeah, point. Yeah, climatise. Yeah. yeah, it's just something to think. It's always something to think about it, and it is a bit of a frustrating thing when it's like you're literally speaking the language that yeah, <laughs> your yeah. first language, and it's still fucking proper. <laughs> we can all use Liam as an example now. Of like, well, Farley did the fucking Apollo, and it was fine. So like, uh, yeah, absolutely, we'll be about fine. too much. I know, if anything, you're normalising Glaswegian yeah, accents on the telly. So you've done the Fringe this year, and your uh, show was called uh, God's Son-in-Law? Uh, brother-in-Law. Bro- bro- I'm going to say that again, because <laughs> I don't know if I So you've done the Fringe this year. <laughs> you've done the Fringe this year, Liam, and your show was called God's Brother-in-Law? Aye, because my sister's a nun, so... That is quite a unique Aye. experience, I can imagine. Aye, I mean... Well, it was more weird growing up because we had an aunt who was a nun, so she would just show up like randomly, and then you'd be like, "Oh, Sister Janet's here," and then like fucking, she'd stay with us for like a week. It was fucking horrible because like <laughs> she just like she didn't like me at all. Like she's fucking. I remember we went out for like dinner once, and I, as a joke, was like, "Oh." I was eight at the time. I was like, oh, "I'm gonna put this pepper in this milk jug." And she just went, "No dinner for you." So I had to sit for an entire meal and just watch everybody else while I just stuck with this jug of fucking peppery milk. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake! Fuck's sake, man! That's that's pure olden days punishment. That like you're uh, not allowed to eat. I'm gonna nuns are pretty olden days to be fair. Yeah, 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 yeah. Be fair, you can't right. get more. Okay, <laughs> but so, so you obviously so you're. Your aunt was the, the nun, and then she came back, and then, then is that how your sister ended up getting into it? Or hey, I don't, I don't know if she, because she joined a different order. Like there's all these different fucking orders of nuns, and they all do the orange order. Is that one of them? Different one. Different one. But they all do like different things and stuff like that. So like one, like some will do teaching, some will do like it's all based around charity. But like some will look after like elderly priests and shit like that. So she's my aunt was a Salesian. I can't remember what they did, but they were fucking up to something. And then they, <laughs> <laughs> not in that way, but like they were dead stuff. And then fucking fill in the days. Uh, and then my sister, we went to a youth club. Well, they went out. My my two sisters went to a youth club ran by nuns. Which when you look back on it, it was girls only. You're like this was clearly a fucking recruitment centre kind of thing as well done in there. <laughs> uh, so she went to that when she was like thirteen, and then like became basically friends with these two nuns uh, from like thirteen onwards, and then went to university, got a degree in chemistry, and then like a fucking I think it was like a masters or something and then just went ah fuck that I'm going to be a nun now so, <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. Right. I don't and really see how chemistry and being a nun I did point up. a shit to her but, but she was like <laughs> doing experiments with fucking wine see if it turns into water <laughs> and things <laughs> <laughs> Uh, did she live in like a convent and shit? Or? Yeah, they live in a con. Well, it's like it's not really. It's just a flat, really. But it's like, <laughs> <laughs> is it really? Uh, a flat just, next to the church. It's, it's just a house. Like it's like a it's a townhouse. It's like a three story in Govan Hill. So, uh, is that bad, where all the donations are going? Is it? Uh, <laughs> so non taxable. <laughs> so they like, just live in like a house with other nuns. Aye, uh, there's only three of them because there's been a bit of recruitment crisis at the Catholic <laughs> yeah. church, but. Some Aye. bad PR for them over the years. How was that? Have you? Did you ever get like pressured into trying to become a priest or something like that? Or? I well, when I was about ten, I was going to be. I wanted to become a priest. Did you? I because I was an altar server, and that seemed that is a great job because like you'd do like fuck all basically. Like you'd hold a book 
yeah. and you're like you're holding a book next to a fucking lectern that, <laughs> you're like why and am I doing this to do that job yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, used to, I used to be an altar server as well I used to carry the cross around and all that shit I, we weren't allowed to do that alright do you deep, weren't trusted that, with like, the, too the dangerous cross. for you like, <laughs> <laughs> too sharp an object for you <laughs> what about the is it the incense it's called the you, smoking they do bar that, the, the priest does that at a funeral Right. And then you get you go and get the wee, the communion wafers and all that backstage. That was it is kind of like your first experience of showbiz because you've got a wee green room backstage, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then the altar is basically a stage, and then you just sit there. I mean the the one the most fucked up thing ever as an altar server was because uh, used to sometimes you'd get asked to do weddings and funerals. I hardly ever got a wedding, but they were always the ones everybody wanted because you would always get money. Well, I used to get money for funerals. You get more money for funeral. <laughs> really? I think yeah, that's where the money. I think it was maybe the was. opposite. I think we did get some money for a funeral, but you would get more for a wedding. Um, usually, because people are happy. usually <laughs> more happy. <laughs> well, not always. And uh, <laughs> but I remember doing this funeral, and uh, I just looked to it, and I used to watch this show called Spin City. It was on Paramount, right? It was Michael J. Fox on it, but the guy that was the mayor was this guy that had white hair. I just remember looking out and seeing this guy that looked exactly like the mayor of uh, <laughs> Spin City, and I just like I, the whole time I was just thinking, imagine that was him just here <laughs> randomly, and I'm here was a bit burst at laughing, but I'm fucking on the altar in the middle of this funeral, you know, going yes, and <laughs> and of course James was a great man, and we all loved him, and I'm here bursting at laughing. <laughs> but, uh, I know, it's quite an interesting experience. So that made you want to become a priest then? Aye, because you'd get all this money for doing funerals and you're like, oh, if this is all you do as a priest, like, you must make, like... Because he's making double what I'm making yeah, now. So get yourself like, on the death circuit. That's aye, what aye, aye. Is. <laughs> well, That's what... <laughs> 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 Believe that again. Same name from earlier. <laughs> Bizarrely. <laughs> he's doing puns he's at the funeral he's doing we in a chip shop <laughs> do you know I spent New Year's Day with him this New Year's Day we were both out doing a gig in Aberdeen uh, that's so, a depressing sentence I, man. <laughs> so it's just me and him so we went for a pizza hut <laughs> <laughs> pizza, pizza hut I went for a pizza hut together on New Year's Day is that open on New Year's Day? I just sat there at the buffet man <laughs> like, God, I'd hate to see him at a buffet Christ <laughs> he's sitting in a glass of milk and pepper going <laughs> <laughs> that's class that's so I, that's weird though. it's a weird ambition for a wee guy no, to have a but see if see raised Catholic though like you do it's it's an option is yeah. that your of, superstar sort of celebrity well, you want to be in the community and all that and he's always kicking about the school and you Aye. go to the mass and you kind of go well that, it's like it's like mm. it's like you know what I mean it's like policeman fireman fucking baker priest you know what I mean Aye. all the community jobs that's Aye. Aye. I mean. also it's a really easy job when you're that age because you don't really see them doing anything they're just kind of <laughs> hanging out like they're just going to like schools and stuff and be like what's happening guys like, right, I. <laughs> and then they're up yeah. on stage they're doing a show every week you know they're getting money in the collection you don't know where that's going you think it's just that's in the back yeah. pocket isn't it? but then and usually it does go off the to top. Them, to be and then you find out that you can't shag and you're like fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> was that the point that you, is that I yeah, was about the point I was like aye this is shite because <laughs> <laughs> my but can some priests not have wives no is that not and stuff? And stuff? Yes, yeah, right. the Catholics don't like like deacon, I think a deacon can yeah a deacon is basically a priest but they can like have a family and stuff. Oh, is that right? an yeah. I don't even know that. Uh, my uncle's a yeah. deacon. So. Very religious family. Jesus Christ. I don't know what a deacon is until right now. Aye. 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 Deacon I Blue know. is a bit as close <laughs> as I mean to know what a deacon is. <laughs> deacon, deacon Blue, when you think about it, they were just trying to, you know, get <laughs> <both together. laughs> Some Catholic were. and some for angels and for the girl. <laughs> um, no, my, my gran was briefly a nun. And no, you know that way, like, when you know stuff about your family history and you sort of just, like, grown up. And then it was at one point I thought to myself, I'm like, ah, hold on, if my gran was a nun, how am I alive? <laughs> <laughs> and so I asked her about she it. She wasn't like, a very good nun. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she got her head turned, you know what I mean? <laughs> she was uh, cheating on God with another man. <laughs> no, but what happened was, because I asked her about it, I was like, gran, what? How can she was in a convent and stuff? I was like, what happened? And so when she was about 17, it's probably about the same age that you get recruited into stand up, right? My <laughs> grandma, was right. And she said she'd seen an ad in the paper and it was about like becoming a nun in this convent in Tring in the like, South England or something. And uh, so she replied to it. And so they fucking came all the way up to fucking Clyde Bank and like fucking went to the door and like basically fucking collected her. 
and took her down south and look collected um, her. Aye, and look, her mom and dad were like pure no one really wanted her to go, all that stuff, but she ended up going. I basically went down and it's just like all these what just the you know, oh, collection oh, oh so she doesn't they like this story. <laughs> doesn't like this story, <laughs> that, Rangers that are Protestant <laughs> <talking. laughs> But um Tring I, and was that in Tring did in you say? Tring, aye. So I was uh, yeah. I had that booked in for just when the pandemic hit, I was gonna go down to Tring and then mm-hmm. I couldn't because Why that was, you going to Tring? I was the Tring Festival. Tr- uh, the Tring. Oh, the Tring, yeah. Where's that? Tring. Yeah, it's like South East England or something, uh, isn't it? Yeah, never heard of it. But she North went down and um, I, she said that, like, she, she after a while she just realised she didn't want to do it, so she like, had to like, make up a lie that her mom was sick and all that. All right. And then she managed to go sure. and come back and go. But she's always got these mad stories of, like, one day they like, went into the wee town and, like, she, the, somebody caught her, like, looking in, like, a, a glass window at some, something in a shop. And they thought she was looking at a reflection and she got fucking... Really? She got made today pure yeah, yeah, yeah. Hunter Hail Marys or whatever the oh, fuck. Oh, well, really? Like, Aye. It's pure mental well, stuff that you... she still brings up all the time. <laughs> 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 fucking go again. <laughs> well, when you go in a... Con- well, you go in any part of the kind of church when you're moving up the hierarchy, you take like a vow of obedience to you, to God, but also to your superiors. So that's how a lot of this... Sh- like, when shit's going on, it gets covered up because you've not only taken a vow to God, you've taken a vow to like your superiors in the Catholic Church. So you have to do whatever they tell you to do. Right. If you don't do it, they can chuck you out. Show it. Very anti grass. Ah. <laughs> just just a way of controlling you because it's like because <clears throat> obviously when you get brought up and that like you know even probably when I went to uni, I still just sort of believe just because. You know, it's just this all you really know, and then and there's such a big thing. They always bang on. That's why they always bang on about faith. And then they're all, they're always kind of like, if you even think that this isn't real, you'll get fucking struck by lightning yeah, or something. Yeah. That's you were always scared to even question things. Is that where the Catholic guilt thing comes? Probably from? where it comes to. But like, you're because I remember any time you would have these fleeting thoughts, like maybe that's a lot of shit, and then you go, like, oh maybe God's heard my thought and I'm going to get fucking killed instantly yeah. or whatever and, that's, and then eventually when you allow yourself to think about it for like five minutes then you go no it's a lot of shit it? <laughs> but that's why it's so I think the faith thing is so drummed in because basically yeah. like any questioning of anything um, like will lead to people realising it's probably a lot of shit and it's a good way to control people as well which I think is was the major function in society for a long time aye well that's what confession was all about or confession was just a way of kind of getting everybody's secrets out of them so like you can like <laughs> then if you were like mm-hmm. well I don't want to go to this church anymore I don't want to give you any more money and they go well you've told me you're cheating on your wife so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, really so they can uh, hold that like the bullying club they've all got dirt on each other so aye, you, know, yeah, it's like, it. you fuck this pig and then we've got all that over you yeah. or the fuck it's basically oh, yeah. the catholic version of the fucking masons isn't it yeah. they make everybody shag a goat or whatever they join and then it's like <laughs> oh you want to leave Wilson do you well fuck it we've got the pictures <laughs> even, but I know like, that's that's aye. amazing isn't it when you think about it uh, I don't know if you want to talk about this or not but you had a bit of bother at oh, the films this year. Are you allowed to talk about that? Aye, I can talk about it. Like, I remember bumping into you in the street when aye. it first happened. You just off the phone. Aye, literally. And just I've never. Told. You are a very laid back man, but that's the closest I've seen you to getting freaked out. Aye, because it was fucking the nuns were basically after the me. fucking <laughs> nuns were chasing him. Your sister and aunt are chasing you at this. Aye, because the so basically there'd been I'd done fringe previews, which is just like a preview of like the show you're taking to the fringe, and then. Uh, some religious fucking nut had came to one of them and then was like, I don't believe his fucking sister is a nun. And then it emailed a bunch of people being like, you can't support him, you can't have him on. But then somehow through all this, found out my sister was a nun and then emailed her convent. He was like, by the way, do you know what he's up to? And then they sent him an email back because he wanted to protest the show and shit like that. And well, then- is it simply because it was in an old church? Is that the main... I think it was the, the content more than anything. Right. I think that was just more of a weird coincidence that it was in the church. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Aye. So it was a Protestant church as well. So I was like, I think they were like, oh, away game. <laughs> oh, was it? <laughs> you and <know us. laughs> right. Aye, because I remember at the time I was like, well, I'm in a church and I was like, they've probably got connections. And then 
my agent at the time was like, well, it's a fucking church at Scotland church, so <laughs> I think you'll be all right. And I was like, all right. So that's, I think that's basically how I was finding that. Put Julian point. Assange in the fucking Ecuadorian embassy. It's fucking Protestant <laughs> soil here. <laughs> <laughs> the nuns fucking can't even pass the threshold. <laughs> Burst into flames. <laughs> Liam's doing his next show in international waters. <laughs> <laughs> so what um, ended up happening then? So did, did they end up, pro- so did these nuns end up protesting your show? Sure. No, because so they sent there was a lot a, of threats, though, wasn't there? Yeah, there was a lot. They sent a lot of threats, basically. And what they done was they emailed the guy back, being like, "Don't protest them. What you want to do is you want to attack them online. You want to." <laughs> <laughs> so is this the people from your sister? This, this is the nuns, sisters' convent. Aye, so this them? is the. But she's not a mother superior, but she's like the head nun of like my sister's kind of order, and she was like, "Attack him online. He's a very disturbed young man." Uh, you need to hurt him in his pockets. <laughs> uh, you need to find a way to say not mention anything that the content of the show is why you're upset because then you'll be able to use that as a free Your speech. Your agent's rubbing her hands together. <laughs> uh, he's going to use that as a free speech argument. Uh, so what you want to do is just say he's a shite comedian and then oh, for some reason this fucking nutter then decided to send that email the nuns had wrote to my agent to be like, see... Even the nuns think he's mental. And then my agent Fucking was like, you've just told us that these nuns want to cyber bully him. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to fucking do something with that. So then it was going to go to the press and shit like that. And then, <sighs> aye, so it all went a bit tits up, man. So did they end up kind of, so they, like because of that, did they end up fucking them selling it just kind of came to nothing? Or? Yeah, well, the thing was, the nuns had a good defence because they could just be like well how do you know we wrote that email <laughs> five man wall <laughs> <laughs> what, what am I doing <laughs> <laughs> so they, they could have just been like we didn't write that he's an article and he's wrote that uh, but straight away the nun was like yeah I did write that so like, well why did you write that and she was like well I don't think what he's saying is alright and then we are like but you've not seen the show you don't know what I'm saying Yeah. and then she was like well I've, I've seen the poster and I was like the poster's just like me with a halo and she was like yeah that's offensive and I was like but you believe everybody's going to get them if they die and believe in God so like what, what's the fucking yeah, issue there yeah. so then it just became like a lot of like really fucking weird arguments uh, I was in with my agent and nuns being like <laughs> well you've said crazy this, but... email chains <laughs> aye so it's fucking weird and then yeah, to be fair rational logic not really nuns strong point I would say like any yeah. religious person not really the you know a logical argument's not really going to go very uh, far yeah. is it yeah they wrote, they wrote, they wrote the end of your show as well aye so I just read the emails at the end of the show basically but the whole time I was like, somebody is going to fucking turn up at that show. Like I was expecting, like to have to chop people out at some point. A big just an audience full of nuns. I'd love to see what a nun's email address was like. Uh, we marry it. Uh, <laughs> 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 we can give you after the show. I want to read this one. Eh? That's class. At cloud dot com. One of the funniest bits about it was like, so she's wrote this big fucking email, basically saying I'm mental and shit. Uh, and then at the bottom of it, it just says "sent from my iPad." <laughs> <laughs> that's like that old Bill Hicks bit of it. It's like pissed off the Christians, and then he's like, "Well, forgive me." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's there was a whole thing about Billy Connolly, wasn't there? Back in the day, you're like the you're new, the, the first yeah. Scottish comic to be protested by the Catholic Church since Billy Connolly. Yeah, yeah, yeah the new Billy Connolly. It's good to know we've come zero <laughs> way forward in like Aye. fucking fifty years. Yeah, because he, I mean, that was a famous thing with him, had yeah. people protesting his shows and stuff. Aye, because that's when my dad found out about it, he was like, oh, that happened to Billy Connolly too. He was like, you should talk to him about it. And I was like, I'm not going to fucking phone <laughs> See if he's on the Scottish Comedy yeah. Forum, Billy Connolly. Get him CC'd into these emails. <laughs> he wasn't in the Scott Squad edition. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting battered <laughs> did that help your show like in terms of publicity in a way because you could say I mean uh, look how well I never ended up it was one of those ones where I was like I'm putting my sister I've not properly talked to my sister about it just because I was like I don't, that's your fucking boss and you swore this foul obedience to him so I never properly talked to her about it but I was just like don't know why I end up dragging it all through Aye. that so I was just like I'll just leave that one there because they fucking 
they got really pissed off because like a newspaper guy did like get in contact with me and was like, I'm gonna go talk to them now. And then fucking they're like, Why are we getting phone calls off the press? And I was like, Why are you fucking trying to cyber bully me? <laughs> <laughs> and so I did your sister know about you doing jokes about that as before and stuff? I well I'd been doing those jokes for about three years and there'd never been an issue. Problem. It yeah. was just until like someone was like, Oh, just have an issue with it. They were like, actually, we fucking do. Right. So that is a weird thing, though. You could just use the Catholic logic against them and go, "Well, you know what? You're right, but I've been in confession now, and I've done ten Hail Marys, and actually, I've been forgiven." So, what, what is a Hail Mary? It's just it's, a, prayer. It's a prayer. So you just say a prayer to like absolve yeah. you, absolve you from. Well, it's a deck. Your like, sins. It's like yeah. a rosary. It's like you usually get a things. couple of them. It's like lines. Yeah. yeah. It's like right. Hail Mary. A punishment, punishment exercise, like a punishment but exercise? an oral punishment exercise that you say in your own head. Oh, you don't say it out loud. No. Yeah, I mean you can say it out loud. Can you what say you can right say for like us? It's Hail Mary, full of grace, Lord of me. And then so, that's not the words. <laughs> <laughs> you should have got them to do that at elocution yeah. lessons. Yeah. <laughs> My girlfriend's Catholic as well, and she said that. Like at Catholic school, they try and put Catholicism into all the different subjects as well. The Jews get that. Like in French, she would learn her Hail Marys, but like in French, I learned I am a pizza. That's like the sort of song that I was learning. Do you know what I mean? All onions and shopping. Yeah, did you have it? I know, it's no, cool. you've taught me that on, <laughs> a, on a rather podcast. It's great, man. I, not, <laughs> not really. Like, I think there's probably stuff that you didn't realize was because you don't know anything else, yeah. but no, no, like that for, yeah. for us. Like, I think it would depend on. I think like if there was mad old school teachers and stuff in certain departments, they would maybe date. Yeah. But certainly, no in we, high school. Certainly, that I can remember. No, no, we had like, a school prayer in high school, and it was read over the tannoy every morning. Oh really? Aye. So like, you go in, and then it was like you just had a tannoy. Aye. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the most crazy part of me. So. We well, actually like, went to school in uh, Bel <laughs> 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 so they do like the bay side <laughs> saved by the bell was shot <laughs> so you'd do like, you'd have like announcements and shit so it'd be like oh this school trip's happening and all that and then after announcements they'd be like right and now the school prayer and some teachers would try and make everybody say it and others would be like do what the fuck you want like, oh, really yeah uh, uh, Mr Belden over the fucking time <laughs> <laughs> get down your Hail Marys that's weird time that's class was your school religious no, no, we were non dumb. Non dumb. My, we I think ours was as well, but we did when like in assembly we'd have uh, like vicars come in and do, do the odd prayer. But like yeah, it, yeah. no one was religious at my school, so it was always confusing. Yeah, in primary we done uh, like hymns and stuff. I think, but yeah, yeah we done them as well. But we didn't. It was I don't think it was a religious school. We, we just have a guy like talking about like the local community and then mid sentence he'd be like, Let's pray and he'd just drop in a you never knew when it was coming, it was just completely <laughs> random. Just a dagger from the shadows. Did you just get taught about other religions in primary school and that? In RE? No, not in, in primary RA, school, yeah. I don't think, but in, in high school we in got high school in RMPS, RMPS, they called it. Yeah. Uh, we got taken to a synagogue in primary school as like a school trip. No, did you? I we had to drive past a Ibrox on the way there on the school <laughs> bus so everybody started booing and then <laughs> we all got taken out the bus and in front of the synagogue and got like fucking like given a, into trouble about satanism in front of this fucking synagogue <laughs> <laughs> they might have probably thought you were booing the synagogue <laughs> <laughs> also in your career you've uh supported Tom Stead on the road aye Tom man fucking rock star some boy the rock star of (laughs) of stand up the audience maybe if they don't know Tom Stead how would you describe him oh man he's like he's just mental like he is like probably (laughs) just like he is basically just a rock star in his world man like he's like just does whatever the fuck he wants like he'll fucking he's cut down on the drinking for whatever <laughs> <laughs> not the drugs just the drinking <laughs> aye but he was like, he's like he's been on like live at the Apollo like he's done like he's a brilliant stand up I hate to see him before I did comedies when, ah, I, was really? yeah, when I was like 15 aye like he's just class like he's like one of those comments where they're just like he just does whatever the fuck he wants to do like he'll yeah. say whatever the fuck he wants to say we've yeah. always like kind of spoke about he did spoke about this thing on a podcast about the wisdom versus the cleverness wisdom versus cleverness man <laughs> yeah you He's gotta get the, the wisdom, wisdom over the cleverness and uh, that's a good a good concept point. some yeah. of his 
like jokes are great though. It's like the, he's got a bit about being addicted to Groupon, and it's like <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's always so in so his lofty hanging in his like his materials about, about bargain hunt or whatever. Aye, or cash in the attic or some Aye. shit, but it's always fun. I love shit like that because <laughs> he's got that great out fish out of water hang because he's Canadian yeah. and he's been in well. The meat van something. routine was his classic. Yeah, that was live at the Apollo. I talked to him about that. He fucking hates that, but really, it's fucking funny. Man. He was like, "Ah, it's just a my pop song." Basically, he was like, "I figured out like oh, the yeah. rhythm and shit of like just like a pop song of." Comedy comedy so i just done yeah. it right that's well great. that's yeah. interesting though. i and think i made the mistake of telling him that i'd paid to see him when i was a teenager and he was like i'm like a god to you <laughs> 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 yeah. he does love that shit. yeah he's fucking hilarious but he always the, the good thing about him and is the funny thing he always tries to give you like wee tags and stuff for your jokes if he ever watches but they're you. always in his voice they're it's never always his voice you. and you can't do it he was like because i was remember when i first started out talking about like how I, I don't know i couldn't get a bird or whatever couldn't get a girlfriend and he'd be like yeah Steve what you gotta say is I don't fuck chicks <laughs> <laughs> imagine he came out and did that listen guys I don't fuck chicks right? and he's like it's that is fucking quite funny, funny. <laughs> <laughs> but it's stuff like that that you could never use but yeah, it's, I enjoy hearing his wee tag and so how was it on the road with Tom then he's just mad like we fucking so we done Hull then we done Newcastle Liverpool and then Barnsley I think and then and so we started in Hull and that was fucking weird because he'd been there like seven years ago and met this one guy and then had a night out with him and ended up in his kitchen. Never saw him again. We'd do this fucking gig. That guy shows up. He's like, I met you seven years ago. He was like, I do you want to come get drunk in my kitchen? So then we fucking end up back in this guy's house. His entire family's there, like his adult son, his wife, his two young kids, the son's baby, like fucking the entire family's there. And we're just getting drunk in the kitchen. And then we both had hotel rooms. But then he was like, we're just going to sleep in these guys' couches for today. <laughs> like, How old are you at this point, by the way? I'd been like 18. <laughs> so You're just like, like one of the sons. I was like, well, guess this is what we do when we're on the road. <laughs> so then we fucking, I woke up in the morning and I'd slept, I woke up on this guy's couch and then there's just like a baby like a foot away from me just staring at me and I was like what the fuck has happened here some train spotting shit I, going down. and then I looked up and he's like the guy's entire family are just stood in the kitchen just staring at me like can you go now <laughs> so I get Tom and be like we need to fucking go <laughs> then we went in Newcastle and we got a big fucking argument there uh, basically because Tom will take the piss when he's drinking like he will fucking try and stay in our place till about seven o'clock in the morning if we can <laughs> so we were there and the staff it was the newcastle stand and they'd kept the place open for them to drink some more so it was like one o'clock in the morning and two of the bar staff were like look we're going to stay on for another half an hour but then we really need to go because we've got a rescue dog and it's got to get out for a walk and stuff like that so i was like all right fair enough so i was like tom like that's the last one because we've got to go and he was like right and then like an hour went by and I was like Tom they've got a fucking rescue dog mate we've got to go and he was like no Liam and I was like why he was like because I've put 50 pounds of tips in that jar and I was like well you're being quite cunty now aren't you <laughs> and he was like Liam what if I put 50 pounds of tips in your jar and I was like well I would take it and then I would tell you to fuck off <laughs> and then he was like what about 100 pounds of tips and I was like well I'd take it and then I tell you to fuck off, <laughs> and then it just he went for like the final one. He was like, "What about two hundred pounds?" I was like, "I'm taking the money, and then you're fucking off." But by that point, like it became like more and more obvious. Like the only option after that was like a fucking scrap. So I was stood there. I'm like, take this fist and put it in your give face. you a knuckle sandwich, Liam. <laughs> so I was pure stood there. And I was like, I'm gonna have to try and fucking battle Tom Stage. <laughs> <laughs> and then everybody in the place is basically like, oh fuck, this is worst and after just staying all night. So they were like, right, everybody, we can stay as long as you want. We we'll just get your drinks and all. <laughs> so we ended up staying there, and then I fucking. I was fucking raging. So then I ended up just like fucking leaving and being like, I'm just going back to the hotel. And then the next morning, I, I phoned me and I was like, 
right, I was like, aye, that was pretty shite last night, Tom. And he was like, I don't remember a fucking thing. <laughs> 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 and you're all right now, then? Aye, we're all good now, man. We're just fucking right together and stuff like that. Yeah, aye, right, Tom's there. Some boy. Some, Some boy, boy, man. What are you up to? Uh, you just get much coming up you? I've got a Glasgow Comedy Fest but that's not till fucking March, March man yeah. I've done the stand this year so if I I see how that goes so in Glasgow what date do you know oh fuck it's the I think it's the 19th mm-hmm. and is uh, this a new show or is this the, the same one for the fringe with the nuns this, on it it's the same one about the nuns from the so fringe. if you want to protest that uh, <laughs> Catholic Church uh, do you get in touch should, they should have done it in Webster's State or the big <laughs> old church <laughs> <laughs> or the Orin Moor or something Orin Moor would be appropriate a <laughs> big old church or whatever yeah. Yeah. and then I'm doing another show in the Van Winkle as well and that's just a work in progress oh, I'm doing the exact same ah mm. yes it'll be no bad I'll see you there mm, yeah Nice, nice. You can protest my show as well. <laughs> <laughs> Take all the bums on seats I can get. Cool. Well, listen, Liam, thanks very much for, for yeah, coming on. Thanks for having yeah, me. Thanks for bringing the lovely dog. Yeah, well. yeah. She's, She's been good family. as gold. She has. Yeah, yeah. Got that been, one yeah. grant halfway through. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. Other than that, uh, just to say thanks very much for tuning in as ever, guys. Uh, you can give us a five star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And if you, please remember to like and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, as well and if you want to get in touch you can at sumlappod at gmail.com and you can also follow us on Instagram Twitter and TikTok at sumlappod but until next time speak to you cheers guys cheers Cheers, Liam thank you cheers guys